Hello, hello, hello. Today we're going to Da Nang, a coastal city in central Vietnam. This is one of my favorite places to visit as I've been here many times before in the past couple of years. Why? It has so many attractions. The river, the beaches, the sea, the mountains, the people, the culture, the food, and so much more at the fraction of the cost of many other tourist destinations. On this episode, we will be taking you to 13 places in two days. From tourist attractions, sightseeing, shows, and food places, all within a 30 minutes drive from the city center. Some are very well known and some are our own discovery that we think it's worth the visit. We will also be taking a look at the Da Nang food scene and a little bit of the nightlife. So come join us and explore Da Nang together. Okay, so we made it to Da Nang. I was here for both work and travel as I do many photography projects for the Hilton Hotel Shane. Hilton has just opened their new property right by the Han River. Inside it's tastefully decorated with hints of the Vietnamese culture. Before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe. It will really mean a lot to us to create more contents like this. We start our journey at the Marble Mountain, a unique landform of cliffs, vegetation, and man-made structures. The man-made structure is heavily influenced by Chinese architecture. The large mountain is filled with pathways, nature, and many sites to explore. I would recommend to spend at least two hours to discover the many landmarks of the Marble Mountain. Among the many pathways, we discovered a secret hideout, a channel that leads you up to the top of the mountain. Not many people get up to this place and it is very difficult to climb, but it rewards you with the breeze and amazing views. On our way back, I've noticed there are very interesting cloud formations. And it's not just this time, but many times during our stay, we see beautiful cloud formations. I think it's how the river, the mountains, the sea meets to create this kind of beautiful effect. In the afternoon, we visit a local market. This type of market we always like to visit when we visit a coastal city. Now we're at the fish market in Da Nang. It is very exciting. There are many, many varieties of seafood here, and they all look so fresh. It was very tempting to buy and cook these seafood ourselves because the price is so reasonable but we do not have any place to cook here with. But our friend Min from our last project we work with took us to a local seafood place. The restaurant has many types of clams and shellfish. You weigh it to know the price and ask the restaurant how you liked it cook. What I would do here is select different varieties of seafood 
and have it cooked in many different ways. Our first dish is boiled clams with herbs. It is served with rice crackers and quail eggs. The clams were very fresh, nicely cooked, and the juice was very flavorful. Next dish is quickly boiled squid. It is served with starfruit, raw banana, mint leaves, and cilantro. The squid was so fresh you don't need it to cook that much and it tastes much better cooked this way. Next is steamed prawn, local herbs, and chili mayo sauce. Sweet from the flesh, briny from the sea, with a lot of fat on the head. This is a large grouper. The owner caught himself this morning and we had it grilled with herbs. Cut them into pieces and wrap them in this vegetable with a spicy seafood dip. We end our meal with oyster rice porridge and fruits from local drive-by fruit seller. The food was very fresh at very reasonable price. Don't get tempted by high numbers. The 100,000 Vietnamese dong is only $4. We stop by another landmark right by the river. It's the Dragon Bridge. It has lights display and breathe fire. This display is on Saturdays and Friday nights only, every 10 to 20 minutes. For those of you who wants to avoid the crowd, I would recommend going to the nearby coffee shop and go to the rooftop. There you can enjoy beautiful views of the Dragon Bridge. Another landmark here is the Hun Bridge, a beautiful bridge that display many thousands of LED lights. To really enjoy this bridge, you have to be here at around 11 p.m. to see it turn. We did manage to do many things in one day. That's because every attraction is very close together. This is the view from our room at the Hilton Da Nang. And this is the suite. Our day starts with the Hilton breakfast. Even though they just open, the Hilton managed to have a wide selection of breakfast items. They have all the usual Western breakfast items which I enjoy. But what makes this place unique are the Asian and Vietnamese breakfasts. Starting with, you guessed it, pho. The pho here comes with many condiments and sauce, and many toppings from beef, Vietnamese sausage, and chicken. Vietnamese food is considered very healthy because they have a lot of vegetables to go with everything they eat. My favorite is the beef noodle with chili sauce and a squeeze of lime. The staff here and most of the places we go are very charming. They have a good hospitality attitude. Another dish I really like here is the rice porridge. It's more of a Chinese dish, 
It comes with many toppings and sauce, but the key is this, XO sauce. It's made of dry shrimp, garlic, chili paste. Have it with stewed pork belly, century old egg, and salted egg. Makes it a very complex dish. Our first destination of the day is somewhere really close. We can even see it from our hotel room. This is the more popular place to visit in Da Nang and it should be one of the first in the list. Lin Ong Pagoda on Suntra Peninsula. This landmark is the symbol of the connection of heaven and earth. As you can see, the architecture is very Chinese. And it's no surprise because many of the Han Chinese migrated to Vietnam. Lady Buddha, the tallest statue of its kind, is a symbol of mercifulness and peacefulness. She's holding a bottle of holy water to sprinkle the kindness to all the Da Nang people. Next destination is a local fishing village that is nearby where we have lunch. This is one of our own discovery that is worth a visit. There are a couple of restaurants here where you can have seafood caught from this area. We had the seafood hot pot. And of course, it came with a lot of vegetables. While we were eating, we saw the fishermen working on their next catch. They say it would take many hours to see their catch, so we went on our next destination. Nearby is a windy cliffside park that has spectacular views. destination is well known among hoteliers and the high-end lifestyle people. It was raining and it was cold, so we decided to sit inside. This is one of the only resort we had to pay in advance to get in, and the price is steep. 1,800,000 dong, or about $80, gets you afternoon tea for two. You pay 1 million dong in advance at the entrance. The quality of the food is okay, but for this price, I should be getting prosecco and caviar. Apart from that, the design of the resort is astonishing. Let me show you a trip to the bathroom. Now 
let's have a trip to other parts of the resort. As you can see, the resort is beautiful and uniquely designed. We came back to our hotel for our dinner at their rooftop restaurant, Sales. We had Vietnamese butter prawn with rice, prawn fried garlic, and salmon steak. This is a show slash fashion show of Ao Dai, the Vietnamese long dress. It starts from China where it all begins and how it evolves till today. spectacular. They also serve tea and local snacks during the show. The venue for the story of Audai is at the Rise Mount Premier Resort. Our next destination is a club. It's not just any club, it's a rooftop bar and club. Sky 36 is on top of the Novotel Da Nang. We come here for many times for the ambience, the shows, and the reasonable price. <laughs> The shows are what makes this place unique, both international and local. This concludes our two days, two nights journey of Da Nang. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for more videos like this. Da Nang is a very beautiful city. What we like here is there are many varieties of attractions. The city, the mountains, the sea, the river, the beaches, and so much more. All of them are in very close distance. So you can do many things in one day. Also, the cost of living is not very high, 
so everything is reasonably priced. There are many more destinations that should be in here, but my hard disk died and I lost all the footage. But these attractions are a bit further away, like Hoyan, there are so many attractions there, and Bana Hills is a must if you have more time.